Welcome to Cornerstone's Christmas Eve service. We are so happy you have joined us for this special service celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. This year, our special Christmas offering will be divided as follows. Half will go to the far mission trip and half will go to the general fund. You may use the special envelopes in your offering envelope box or designate Christmas in the memo line of your check. Thank you for your generosity. Hi, welcome to Cornerstone's Christmas Eve Classic Worship Service for 2020. I'm Mike Gillen, pastor of Cornerstone United Methodist Church. To those of you who are new to Cornerstone, welcome and thanks for joining us. Please contact us at our website, cornerstoneofallon.org, clicking on the Contact Us tab, then filling out the Connect card. To all of you who have Facebook pages, please take a minute and click the Share button on our virtual service to share it with your friends. Once you've done that, then click Share Now. Near the end of my part of this service, I'll be leading in an agape meal, which looks to the sacrament of the Lord's Supper without actually being the sacrament. So, have bread and something to drink, and we'll celebrate the agape meal together Remembering that the divine presence of Christ, Emmanuel, is literally with us today, regardless of where we are. This day, the only God who lives, the creator, sustainer, and redeemer, unites us in grace and love. Also, have a candle or two handy as we conclude the service today with Silent Night, a great Christmas carol meant to be sung by candlelight. Jesus promises us in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Through the Holy Spirit, we are literally brought together by this virtual technology. So let's allow God to make this a very special Christmas Eve worship. Find in these moments a place of sanctuary where God creates for you an experience of sacred space and time with other people of God. Join me in celebrating Christ's birth as we enter this time of prayer. Pray with me. God, you brought us together today in ways we couldn't have imagined around a miraculous birth that no one really could have understood. 
tonight, help us, God, to receive your gift of the Christ child in a way that reveals your grace and transforms our hearts. In Christ's name, amen. Testament scripture lesson is from Isaiah 9, verses 2 through 7. Hear these prophetic words describing what the birth of Christ will mean for all of creation. It's meant for us tonight. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle, every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from this time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
Testament scripture lesson is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. Hear these words of life meant for you and for me today. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place with Quirinius, who was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. Joseph went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared, appearing to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those with whom his favor rests. Thank you. 
Tonight is Christmas Eve. The past four Sundays, we've lit Advent candles in anticipation of the arrival of Jesus. These candles represent the hope, peace, joy, and love that form the heart of our Christian faith. Tonight, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. We see in the Christ child the truth that God is with us, literally taking human form in order to form eternal connections with us. The lighting of the Christ candle is at the center of the Advent wreath, symbolizing the source of our Christian faith. Christ becomes our eternal light. This light shows us the way to a life of serving God, following Christ, and living in the Spirit. Let us pray. Our God, thank you for the eternal gift of Jesus. As we celebrate his birth, remind us to be hopeful, peaceful, joyful, and loving. Through Christ our Savior, we pray. Amen. Thank you to Carrie Hartso for leading tonight's Advent candle lighting. The season of Advent leads us to prepare for the celebration of Christ's birth and anticipate the promised return Christ will make for us all one day. I hope you're preparing for Christmas, fully prepared. I remember when my kids were little, having a lot of last minute Christmas details, that was just part of what we had to do every year, it seems like, you know what I mean? Every Christmas, I would promise myself to stop buying big gifts for the kids that needed to be assembled. My wife and I spent many Christmas Eves after Christmas Eve worships, staying up until the wee hours, putting toys and other kinds of gifts together. Every year, I dreamed of the next Christmas being a no assembly necessary celebration of Christ's birth. As kids get older, I've come to enjoy the simplicity of gift giving, especially with online shopping and home delivery and my kids loving something that's green. It always fits them. This Christmas Eve, I'm much more relaxed because of all the preparations that have been made for the Gillens to have a great day. No assembly needed this year. The Christmas, this Christmas, God is wanting to work in your heart, not only preparing you for Christ's birth, but helping you to receive the gift of the Christ child. Christ's birth is meant to be a holy spiritual experience. The birth of Christ opens the door for God to uniquely relate to people. The Old Testament name for Christ is Emmanuel, meaning God with us. On this Christmas Eve, it is God's intention that you would realize that Christ's birth offers you the constant unwavering presence of God with you, no matter what happens in your life or who you are. How can you receive this gift? How can you grow in your awareness of God in your life? By asking God's eternal grace to take hold of you and grow strong in your heart. As you embrace the gift of Jesus Christ's birth, understand that God wants to give you a sense of hope, peace, joy, and love in your heart. These four attributes of Christian faith, hope, peace, joy, and love, have been our Advent themes these past four Sundays. They can also be the themes for how you think, speak, and behave on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Right now, I'm asking God to work in your heart. 
opening you up to the reality that God's Holy Spirit is inspiring Christ's gifts of eternal grace in you. May you be filled with hope, discover God's peace, celebrate in joy, and live in love this Christmas. Allow God's Spirit to do the work necessary in your heart this season. Embrace Emmanuel, God with us. Live better by faith. Today, be people of hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. The Agape Meal is a way for us to unite around a virtual table bound by a common faith, a divine grace, and the eternal Holy Spirit. Through the Agape Meal, we realize what it means to call Christ Emmanuel, God with us. John Wesley, a founder of Methodism, practiced this service of sharing food, prayer, and religious conversations along with hymns and other Christian kinds of experiences in the very earliest days of the Methodist meetings. The Agape Meal brought people of different groups together, finding its origin in the practices of the early church, recalling the sacrificial love of Christ that defines the ways his followers humble themselves in faithful service to God, to one another, and to all whom the Spirit leads us. The Agape Meal can be for us a means of grace, bringing our hearts closer to the truth of God's salvation. So bring to your table bread and something to drink, and let's join together in this special meal on this special Christmas Eve. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. Bless your creatures and grant that we may feast in paradise with you. Let's pray. God of earth and heaven, feed your hungry children. Your grace be given to our spirits, which is that true immortal bread. Grant us and all around us an experience that unites us with you and with one another through your pardoning, saving grace. God, your grace is the true gift of faith and love. Amen. Be invited to a holy life today. Take the bread that sustains you and allow it to remind you that Christ sustains you eternally. Take and eat. Be invited to a life of sacrifice for Christ. Take the cup before you that offers you refreshment and allow it to remind you that Christ's blood restores your soul eternally. Drink with me. Let's pray. Our God, by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with one another, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in his heavenly banquet. On this Christmas Eve, may Emmanuel, God with us, be real in our hearts and lives. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, we glorify you, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now, if you have a candle, I invite you to light it as we sing together, Silent Night. Yeah. Um.
It's been so great to be with you for Cornerstone United Methodist Church's Christmas Eve Classic Worship Service for 2020. I hope you've been inspired to humble your spirit before the Christ child tonight. May God bless you, and may you find that tomorrow you have received God's Son, celebrating the birth of the Incarnate One. As we conclude our worship together, allow me to offer you a blessing. As we leave this time, the grace of God, the light of Christ go before us. Allow God to fill you with the grace you need to reflect Christ in what you think, say, and do. Be blessed and be a blessing to a world that needs God's hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. And Merry Christmas. <laughs>